Hey guys, how's it going? And um, I got a nice fancy display here to basically illustrate. How's it going, guys? I think I'm gonna. I don't, there's no chair, so I'm just gonna like kind of stand here. Maybe I'll get on my hands and knees for you. But anyway, um, not in that way. Don't think anything weird here, right? Uh, anyway, you got to give it to me because I'm coming to you um, right now in the morning. And I'm trying to break this down for you guys in full transparency so you kind of understand how this industry works. So we're going to basically dissect how traditional credit repair is done, how the whole industry of credit repair is mandated, and basically why credit repair companies charge monthly and why it's so slow. Okay, and it's important because you're, you're still wondering which company to work with, right? Well, yeah, there's a reason for that. So two things here. Uh, number one is people are complaining why credit repair is slow. Well, because look at how the businesses are run. There are these um, monthly fee business models where they you pay them, they do a little bit, and you pay them, you do a little bit more, and they pay them. Do, Okay, and then there's people that say, oh, you know, Pinnacle can't charge up front for credit repair. It's against the Credit Repair Organizations Act. No, it's not. There are, there are lawyers that teach this. Okay, there are conventions that teach this. If any, if any of you guys know anything about credit repair, okay, you're misconstruing the Credit Repair Organizations Act. And actually, those laws are federal laws, and um, it depends upon their jurisdiction of where you're at. So the state of New York is different than California per se and different than Georgia. They're all different. They're all different laws and municipalities and jurisdictions and you need to follow them. And they basically decide what they do. Okay? You don't, they do. So don't try to be like them because I talk to a lot of people. Uh, I, I run a business, Lexington Law runs a business, they charge an enrollment fee. All these companies are still in existence. There's, there, There's... You know, you guys don't know better than them. There's only so much that you know. And if you're not a professional in this business, don't act like one. That's just common sense. Be humble. Okay, and if you're not on this channel to, you know, sign up with our service or decide not to, right? That should already be in your head. Figure that out. The benefit for you is to, one, are you going to hire a credit repair company? Well, this, this guide might help you, okay? And if you're still on the fence of working with us, this guide might help you. So what we have here is um, basically the bureaus. This is you and your credit report. You have a credit report and it has errors on it. How does it get errors on it? Basically, the creditors right here, Bank of America, Chase, Capital One, Credit One Bank, all of these banks that are reporting data to you, about you, they're sending it to Equifax, they're sending it to Experian, they're sending it to TransUnion, okay? TransUnion hosts that information about you and also sells it to creditors and it sells the report back to you. If you don't agree with it because you have a low score or whatever, you wanna clean your credit up, you have the right to dispute it under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Now, here's the problem. When you dispute those that report with the bureaus, they have something that's called a ACDV, Automatic Credit Dispute Verification System. It's a system that they have in-house. You wouldn't know this because you never worked for the bureaus. Pinnacle Credit Repair knows people that work inside. The people that taught me credit repair pretty much started credit repair. They were there with the lawyers. They were there with, legend, uh, with the senators, with Congress. The people that I have in this phone right here on my... Um, iCloud and my Samsung. I have two phones, okay, linked to my Google. Both, those, both of those accounts combined, my iCloud and my Google, have contacts that you won't even, you, you would never get. Probably, you never know these people, okay? These are the people that went up there and made this. The people that made the Fair Credit Reporting, uh, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, I know, okay? I have them in my phone. They went up there. When I say up there, they went up to Washington. Okay, they went up to the court of appeal. They, they, they fought, they made this possible. And they were there when Lexington Law's doors opened. So how about that? What do you have to say about that? 
Mr. Smart One watching this. You got nothing to say. So pay attention because I'm tired of people's nonsense. Okay? The things that people put in the comment section are just outright just amateur at best. Okay? I think it's cute. People, they like to join an industry. Like they, they like to think that they know what they're talking about. But you look at the, the uh, <clears throat> experience they have. It's not a lot. Okay? You want to work with people with a lot of experience and a lot of success. Okay? Or at least people that know people with a lot of experience and a lot of success. And the things that I know, I got from all those people. The people that went up there. And when I say went up there, went to the court. When was the last time you went up to the federal court? Okay, quiet. Anyway, if you don't know what this is, then you definitely need to listen or just hop off. Because trolling in the comment section is not going to get you anywhere. Okay? All right, you got multi-million dollar companies endorsing Pinnacle and we haven't even paid them anything. And they're not even paying us. Okay, they're doing it because I'm a genius at credit repair. I created the system called ACAT, which you probably never heard of in your life. If you haven't heard of ACAT, then listen, okay? Because there's some groundbreaking um, FinTech technology and it's called ACAT artificial intelligence to repair credit and then let me explain how this kind of works because i took my morning to make this video for you people watching this so at least watch the full video and you could decide whether or not i'm crazy well i already know i'm crazy okay but am i uh do i do i know what i'm talking about yes i do and i and i wrote a illustration here to prove that automatic and you could google it if you want <clears throat> you're not going to find it they're not putting this online, okay? I'm putting this online. They're not putting this online. But I gotta be careful what I say because I don't wanna create enemies that I don't want. And that's precisely why I don't share everything that I know is because I don't wanna be, you know, I don't wanna upset the apple cart because it's just like during the lockdown, people were putting hand sanitizer on your hands. Well, if you lived throughout the 90s and the early 2000s, you would know that hand sanitizer only makes bacteria more resistant. It's like, why would we use antibiotics so seldomly? That's like the last resort, okay? Because the damage it does. It creates, it creates bacteri um, bacteria resistant to the antibiotics, okay? That's why doctors are now looking for more ways, more, more types of antibiotics. There's several antibiotics, amoxicillin, Penicillins, your amoxicillins, you know, so it's just logic. If I, if I go ahead and say all the tactics online on YouTube on how the creditors basically make this report bad for you, what's to stop Capital One employee, um, Credit One Bank to pop on YouTube and then study all of the methods that we shared with you and then counteract them? Uh, come on, people. Have you read The Art of War? Do you guys, pe do you people read? I mean, I know you guys have bad credit, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't strike you as a degenerate. And I'm not trying to be derogative, but I'm, I'm here to help you. Like, if you want to think critically and be educated, then read a book. Okay, think, think for yourself. Why would anyone have a YouTube channel and tell you how to do this? When Capital One, Credit One Bank, Bank of America, they can go on YouTube too and they can say, oh, you know what? I know how Jim tricks me into getting this negative item off. I'm going to block him. It's like if we're going to play chess with each other. Why would I have the playbook and give it to you? Okay? If we're, in, if we're if there are two opposing teams are on, on YouTube right now and they're versing each other and then one coach decides to put the playbook on YouTube, do you think the other team will have an advantage? Absolutely. Why do you think it's unethical for a lawyer to approach the other um, party without the authorization of the person that retained him in the first place? You can't, you, you, you can't approach the opposite party and try to do stuff like that. It's unethical without the court knowing about it. Okay? So there needs to be full transparency. And if you guys study anything about law and stuff, you would know that. There's rules and codes of conduct that basically um, help people be put, become more transparent and honest. The, the law is not a complicated thing. I mean, it is, but it's also really simple. Just do good. 
Don't lie and prove to people that you're not lying. And this is what I'm talking about. And we can go into the procedure of disputes to basically bring the light on how transparent the Fair Credit Reporting Act um, allows us to be because the creditors are taking advantage of you. They're taking advantage of you and they're not being transparent. They're not verifying things accurate. They're reporting things accurate. They're using ACDV when they know they shouldn't. The automatic credit dispute verification system. So let's go into that. And you guys better pay attention. If you don't watch this full video, you're, you're not going to get closer to removing your stuff off. Okay, I'm just going to let you know. You're going to waste your time with somebody else. There's a fee. Yes, there's a fee if you're broke. <clears throat> Maybe I'll post a video on how to make some money. Right? I'll, I'll post a short about how to do that. Right after I make this video, you will you pay, pay close attention to my post. I can show you how to make $5,000. I'm a hustler. Okay? I, I can do it. You can do it. Okay, I never graduated high school. So if I could do it, you can do it. If you say, oh, I don't have the money, it's too, dude, it's not about having the money, it's about you getting off your button working. <clears throat> anyway, you have this ACDV system that they have, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. <clears throat> and basically they jam your disputes, okay? You have Pinnacle, they have ACAT, okay? And then you have, you know, Lexington and Law, stuff like that. So this ACDV method basically would, block you three ways from what I know is three ways UTP let me ask you do you know what UTP is no you don't do you know what VAC is no you don't if you don't know the abbreviated version you don't know jack about credit repair I'm just letting you know then you need to watch this or hire me okay so uh, do you know what NMT is I kind of forgot what it is right now but let me think I wrote this earlier but I forgot. I can forget things. My mind is blank. Um, hmm. Wow, I forgot it. Anyway, we'll get back to it. Anyway, UTP is unauthorized third party. They'll say that, you know, they'll give you one of these crazy letters that says, let me, let me give you, actually, I can't do it because it would it would expose people's private information, but I'm just gonna tell you right now, here off the bat. You'll get this unauthorized third party letter from the Bureau stating that, oh, we believe that someone unauthorized repairing your credit or this and that, and you know, we need your information. And if you send your verifying identity documents, they're still gonna send you this. It's their way to basically stall. Now, if you know anything about the law, and legalities of credit repair, you would know that experience in a, has been through countless lawsuits regarding the negligence of their disputes. And now these are their alibis. This is their alibi. This is how they can get away with what they're doing. Because they're getting away. Do you know, have you been paying attention to the recent lawsuit with Experian? They had a $22 million settlement and that was given. There was a YouTube video that I keep on talking about it. And that's just and I use that. That's not the best example. <clears throat> it's not even the best, it's not even close, but it's the most recent example. And I want to show you the most recent example because it, it would show you that even to, ter to current times, they're still doing the same shit they've been doing since the 80s. Since the 80s. Number two is VAC, verified as accurate. <clears throat> they'll, they'll say that, oh, according to information the creditor gave us, the information is verified as accurate, but you never received the scope in the investigation per creditor, meaning if you disputed 15 items on one bureau and the credit and you got responses back with BAC, but you never got correspondence of the original contract in, a, in the legal time frame from the creditors, yet they say this, that isn't a violation because it would show that they did not verify or investigate this in accordance to the Fair Credit Reporting Act. There you have it. And the second one, I mean, the third one is, I think it, it, wow, I can't believe I forgot it. Anyway, we'll get back to it. So this is the, 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 the one, two, and three defense mechanisms. This one, I completely forgot what that meant. I wrote it earlier. It is non- non 
M C No Completely forgot what it was It would be the third one that they use I think this has something to do with the time frame. Uh, anyway, I forgot. I'll get back to it. It's to show you I'm not perfect. But anyway, it, I forgot. I complete, I'm honestly, I've completely, I've completely forgot what this one is. But I think it has to do with the legal time frame of the response. Like if, for instance, if you had the information re-added, if we disputed information, and this has happened, uh, very rarely it happens, but it does happen. Let's say you disputed something, it got removed, then it got added back. Well, you should basically track that by the time frame from your original dispute and from when they sent you VAC, verified as accurate, and then when it was removed, when this is for things that were removed and then re-added. Well, it's, it, it's, let's say they produced information later, whether it's verifiable or not. Because um, I don't think, it may not, most likely it won't be verifiable anyway. But the fact that they responded with that and they believe that it's verifiable, the bureau will might sit, might re-add it back on. But here's the thing, I can guarantee you between that time and your original dispute, it's past 30 days, so you have that one. And number two, the fact that they changed information before and they re-added it and modified it would indicate it was reported in a different manner, right? The status. I'm not talking about you know, your balances, balances change all the time. So a creditor can report you paid this balance on this date. But what if they change the complete status of the account when they don't, when they didn't follow proper procedure? Then you can actually play that card. And that will most likely happen. The creditor will say, oh, it's a collection, it's a charge off, it's a 30 day, it's a 90 day late, okay? Or it's a collection status, but they're still reporting the 30 days late, 90 day late, 60 day late, and then there was, and then they will close the account one section it would say date it was closed on July, but it would say it was a charge off, but it was late in December. So you see how all that doesn't make sense? I made another video about that, you should watch it. Basically that's how they jam you. That's how they get you. So what ACAT does, automatic credit analytic technologies, it produces disputes, I think around one to 15 disputes, preloads them, when, the, when you sign up, when you provide us a credit report, basically already produces the disputes and it counteracts what they're going to say based upon years and years of data. What, more, what, what better way can you predict anything with using history as your teacher? Like, if such and such did this 10 times in, one, in, in, in five years, what's the likelihood of them doing it later? How do you think the credit score predicts your likelihood of defaulting. It basically is just an algorithm that understands human behavior. It's like AI. It's like it would, it would be the early stages of AI. It originated from what was called the Hamiltonian credit system before, it was way before your guys' time, way before my time. You guys probably don't even know this, but before the FICO score, there was a Hamiltonian credit system that was used to basically calculate the likelihood of barter and trade. Someone you know, defaulting on a loan, right? So you have that, and um, ACAT pretty much does that, but on your side, and it's rapid. So we don't just wait, you know, we send a mail, a mailer off to some department, which will give you some BS, you know, result back. It cuts, whereas it will take you 60 days into 15 days. So that's the advantage, the time, would be ACAT. That's the value that we have. People like that. They like that ACAT is so awesome. It would jump skyrocket because we make it similar responses to you, but the time you get them and we get them, ours is much earlier. And that's important because it's better to wait three months than it is to wait 12.